and welcome to Stakeout, a bi-weekly podcast from the team at Vault Boys WV, bridging the gap between video games, culture, history, and more. Each week, we discuss a video game subject through the lens of what inspired it. My name is Dave Chathans, and joining me is my good friend, Austin O'Connor. How you doing, Austin? What's going on, man? How's your week been? Oh, my voice just cracked there a little bit. Hitting puberty again. Yeah. How's your week been? What have you been up to this week? Uh, I've been freezing this week. Been freezing? Yeah. Yeah. Has it been I woke up this morning. I felt great. Mm -hmm. I rolled out of bed and I was refreshed. It was warm, Mm -hmm. super cozy. I got ready for work. I asked Alexa what the temperature was, as I do every morning. Do you have Alexa? Yeah. I have a... Well, I have an Echo Dot, so it's very subtle. Okay. Yeah. So I See, always... I'm uh, on the subject of on the subject of Lex. So let me go ahead and take this off the rails a little bit. Um, there's this delightful commercial on television. I don't know if you've seen it, and it's got this boy that's reading a pig "Good Night Moon." Have you have you have you seen this? Uh, and yes. It's like it is like the most sweet and endearing commercial, and yes. I feel like it's targeted at me oh, to okay. buy Alexa. Yeah. Listen, Alexa, I don't use it that much, mm-hmm. other than for little things. Mm-hmm. One of my favorite things is to just, I'm in bed and I'm not getting to sleep. Right. I, you know, Alexa play rain noises or Alexa play beach sounds or it, there's a sound for anything and mm-hmm. it's very soothing. So mm-hmm. that puts me to sleep. But it's, I got it last year when they were on sale for like 25. So that was really the yeah, only yeah. reason. I was like, I can't pass that up. That's kind of cool. And you can also play Skyrim on it. I don't know if you knew that. I didn't know <laughs> yeah, that. I they, saw that, yeah. I thought that was a joke at first, and then I was mm-hmm. like, Alexa, play Skyrim. And there I was for like 30 yeah, they minutes. They had Michael Keegan Key playing it <laughs> on the yeah. E3 stage. It was kind of cool. but uh, So I asked Alexa what the temperature is. You know, it's been, it's not been that cold. And then this morning she hits me with, it's 13 degrees with a wind chill of negative 18. And immediately my whole world just crashed down on me. Yeah. And because... <laughs> I walk to work because I live close to where I work. So I walk to work because I cannot, you know, I don't want to buy a parking pass when I live less than 10 minutes away. Mm -hmm. Just I feel like that's just a waste of money. Mm -hmm. But on days like today, I really regret that decision. Yes. Because I could not feel my entire head when When I came in. Yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, and it could be worse. I mean, we're pretty we're pretty well off, but in, I, I know in Chicago it was really bad. And I was watching the news, and today it was like if you were out, if any part of your body was out in the open for thirty minutes, you would have frostbite. Yeah, in Bismarck, mm-hmm. North Dakota, I think it's North Dakota. Yeah, um, it was ten minutes. You had your body out there, and the the real feel up there was like negative seventy five. I don't even know what that means. Like, like how do you how do you fa- like, I can't fathom. Negative seventy five degrees. Do they start measuring it in Kelvin after that? It's like, like what? They, <laughs> like what? Like once you get past like negative twenty, do you? Does it really feel any different? I just, I I cannot see it feeling. I just feel like it's cold. Like it's cold. It is yeah. cold. My friends in Chicago mm. told me that I guess they are hitting all time record lows this week. Yes. Which like think of, think about that. I mean Chicago is cold. Cold. Yeah. It's like what, like negative fifty there? I think at one yes. point this week, like, like that's people they showed. A, I looked at a picture that had rush hour traffic there, mm-hmm. and it was like maybe three cars in the interstate, and it was like in downtown, and it was like parking lots empty mm-hmm. across the board. And I there just, was steam coming off of yeah. like fog coming off the lake because the lake was naturally so hot because mm-hmm. it's as they call it a great lake. Yeah, up it's there, it's pretty great. Uh, but I just think about everyone's heating bills. That's like one thing on a, on that and that scale. But then I think about people that don't have a home yeah. or that or animals that are mm-hmm. on the street and mm-hmm. just anyone that has to sleep outside. Mm-hmm. Like that's terrifying mm-hmm. that this weather. I mean, so I think I mean, luckily, I think a lot of people even here, I noticed this week they're having different shelters. Yeah, they're having up, warming, warming centers. centers. Yeah. So yeah. that's good. And I, I hope mm-hmm. that these places will also have those. Yeah. Um, but. Again, I, the concept of negative, even like negative 30, negative 40. Yes. Like what? One of my friends that lives in Chicago tweeted today uh, that she wanted just to step outside for just a second, just to mm-hmm. see what negative 44 degrees feels like. Mm-hmm. She said, but my dad kind of advised me not to. So I, I, I kind of would like to feel it real quick. If I could just hop <sighs> see, out, hop back in. 
I had a buddy of mine that was trying to train to do like some mountain hiking, like on a snowy mountain. And every morning he would go out in the winter. This is in Virginia, mm-hmm. and he would sit in his underpants and uh, his front, like uh, in oh. his front porch. So he wanted hypothermia and like drink coffee. And I was like. <laughs> Three weeks like, later, I don't know what you're preparing yourself for, <laughs> like well, other than death. I don't know like, how accurate this. I don't is. think it. I don't think your body works like that. It's not. Like, yeah. Like maybe <laughs> eventually humans will grow thicker <laughs> hair on their bodies. In that vein, though, in that same vein, like I've heard. I again don't know how accurate this is. This is not me saying this is a factual. This is statement, it's fake science. But I've heard that a lot of the people that they find dead at like Mount Everest or any of these that they have stripped their clothes off because I guess maybe there's this scientific thing that your body starts to get, you, you start to burn up. Like you feel hot mm. when you're, you know, about to die from these conditions. Mm-hmm. So I feel like, and again, I don't know how factual this is. I haven't yeah. done a lot of research. Into a lot, it, yeah, you're but just, it's almost as here. if they, they said that they were like ripping their clothes mm-hmm. off because they're burning up. Mm-hmm. It's so cold that you get hot. See, I'll spitball a, 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 a counterpoint to that. Of mm-hmm. Maybe there's other hikers that see the dead hikers and mm-hmm. they find the clothes and then they put them on themselves so that they're warmer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't think about that. See, no. But at the same time, <laughs> I don't think that there are hikers that are just not reporting the dead bodies like, or yeah. that they, or that they took their clothes. <laughs> There's Bob. I saw him last month. I guess he's sitting. Oh guys, I forgot to tell uh, you. I forgot to tell you. Ran into Jimmy up there. Yeah. He's dead. dead. Uh, his I took his clothes. This is his coat. <laughs> yeah. I forgot to tell you guys. I've we got might his wanna, last will and testament wanna, in my pocket. We might want to go up and get his body. Yeah. I, well, I it's preserved because it's cold. I don't think that's so, happening. No. Yeah. But yeah. So I, it, temperature is such a weird thing to me. We are obviously very fortunate because we don't get these lows that often. No, Charleston's not bad. It's, it's like the other easy. day when I was playing, I was on PlayStation in a party with some people, and a lot of them were in, were in Illinois, Wisconsin. They were, yeah. you know, in, in, uh, there, much further north than us. Yeah. Flatlands. And, and I was like, hey, what's the temperature up there? And they were like, uh, it looks like it's two degrees outside. What's it down there? And I was freezing this day, but I was like, oh, uh, it's 41. <laughs> like, yep. I felt like such a diva at that point. Like, yeah. I felt like how I view someone from Florida that says it's cold when it's like 70. Yeah. It's just, uh, it's it's kind of amazing to look at just. It's like when it in, like snows a centimeter in Atlanta and everybody flips out. Or Charlotte. When I lived in Charlotte, God, they were, there would be just on the, on the radar, there would be a potential chance of like a half an inch dusting yeah. and schools were closed before was, it even happened. That was our issue was we, they had that snowstorm a few weeks ago. It was, well, it wasn't a few weeks ago. It yeah. was back in December and we were flying back from New York and we almost didn't make it back because they canceled all the flights in Charlotte. Yeah. And we were asking, we were in New York, we we're asking one of the people that work for uh, American Airlines. We were like, how often does this happen? Or like, oh, anytime there's snow, Charlotte closes because yeah. they're a bunch of babies. <laughs> and it's <laughs> and, and and in that sense, yeah, I used to be like, oh yeah, you know, they're just they're just wimps about it. But yeah. then I, I guess you just look at the infrastructure they have. They like they don't have the tools yeah. to clean. Like here, even in Charleston, it's different than in Bluefield because yeah. in Bluefield it's such they're a higher elevation. Per- yeah, Bluefield has the prepared. trucks out ready to go. Bluefield yeah, clears the at roads. 3 yeah. Here, even in Charleston, where it's a little less likely because of the lower elevation, they're, yeah. they're not as prepared here. Mm. And then in Charlotte, there's like Charlotte's a huge city, and it seems like there's like two trucks. <laughs> like they, they had that don't... whole thing, and, and I don't know if you, you didn't live here then, but we had a big snowstorm about two, three years ago. Um, well, I was in Huntington for that one. Yeah, so I was I was near. Yeah, I remember you were near. the storm. But the 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 mayor at the time, who's who's out of office, thank the Lord, um, <laughs> he. They were like, bring the salt, bring the salt trucks out, bring the salt trucks out. And there was so much snow and it was so cold. He's like, listen, if I put the salt trucks out there, they're not going to do anything because yeah. salt's not going to melt the snow until it gets to a certain temperature. It's two degrees outside. It's not yeah. going to happen. Yeah, it's uh, it gets to a point, And that's the thing. I, I feel like everywhere is just when you get down to negative 50, why? Why would anyone be open? Mm don't go out <laughs> stay home i mean other than a hospital yeah that's it that's it <laughs> like, just that's stay. really just stay you need hospitals campbell's chicken noodle soup gosh it's but that's the thing with you the look, soda on the side here's the thing you look at charlotte and atlanta and these southern cities when they are possibly getting snow yeah and the stores are just bombarded for those bread and milk sandwiches oh yeah. Peop- yeah gotta get your bread gotta get your milk 
So uh, what do you do with all that? Make penicillin? <laughs> so you look at that. If that's that crazy, imagine when you're expected to have a snowstorm and negative 50 degree temperatures. Mm. That's just insane to me. Yeah. That's probably pandemonium. I don't know how there's not rioting. I would, I would nope out of that. Yeah. I this I saw there was an onion uh there was an onion article that mm. came across my Facebook and it was like uh what was it? It was like uh northern Wisconsin man thinks of moving or it's like talking about the weather being terrible. I'm screwing this whole joke oh, all up. Fine. But it was like northern Wisconsin man thinks that this is the year he finally moves someplace south and warmer, uh, like Michigan or something like that. Yeah. <laughs> it's just so cold up there. Like, yeah. it's, uh, it's unreal. But that's one thing, really, from all elements, all, all weather, natural disasters, anything. West Virginia, we, we're pretty fortunate. Pretty I mean, secluded. We, we get a lot of floods. We get the, floods, the, but in terms of, you know, you never really hear about tornadoes because the, the mountains. We, I mean, we had the great earthquake of 2011. I mean, that was, that's, we will rebuild. We will rebuild. From like the three chairs that fell oh over my on gosh. my front porch. I, I, a bag fell off my shelf. <laughs> <laughs> I remember, a bag fell off I remember sitting in my dorm room yeah, in Marshall. We, were, we everybody I, was in there because we were. <laughs> it was our freshman year. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I was on. I was FaceTiming a friend that was in Morgantown at WVU, yeah. and we both felt it at the same time. And that was the only reason the, we were like, yeah, yeah. "What?" Because if I would have felt it and I wasn't talking to anyone, I yeah. would have just thought that like someone slammed a door in the next room or something. My favorite, <laughs> and that was like b- back when like memes were, were were kind of like they weren't the thing that they are now. Yes, but the meme went around where it had all the patio chairs and there was one that was knocked down it was like the great earthquake of 2011 <laughs> we, must rebuild. we must rebuild yes so let's warm the subject up a little bit let's get a little toasty in here yeah what have you been playing this week um so i've really been focusing and honing my skills on farming simulator Yes. That's mm-hmm. not really. Oh, okay. Just kidding. Well, you wrote down here, Farming Simulator. Well, no, no. Let me get in my next one. The one that's really, the, the real okay. the real meat and potatoes. Yes. Is what I, uh, mm. uh, it's a wonderful game. Uh, it's sort of an underground game. I don't know if a lot of people have heard of it. Mm-hmm. It's called Bubsy 3D2. Yeah. And uh-huh. if you look online, there's actually a video. The creator of the game kind of gives you a rundown of the game. Um, it's very well thought out. It's a very articulate Um there's a lot of influences in the game. I think it, it's very, like me, I have an English degree. Uh-huh. Uh, I'm a photographer, so I love art. Yeah. And I love anything artistic. So um, definitely look up, just go to YouTube and look up Bubsy 3D2, uh, and you'll see, uh, it should be like the first video. The guy, it, it shows how much of a genius he is and how detailed the game is. So just do that. Yes. I won't like ruin anything else, but that's what I've been working on there. Um, and in terms of, well, I know just, tip- we'll leave, we'll leave that one. At I that. know that typically we talk about like the influences and the origins, yes. but like he does such a good job. Good job I'll just it. leave it there. And then other than that, oh, I am uh, still on fallout. So that's another thing. You're still this is, a, it's a common theme. I know that it's, we're not, I know that like we're supposed to talk oh, about yeah. other games. Well, it's good. Well, it's good because, you know, I've kind of here recently just kind of fallen off of it and have been, have been playing and some other stuff. You've been and all was, over the place with your games. I, it, every time I log in, you're playing something different. That's true. And then I let it run. Yeah. I have a bad a bad issue. Just like, I'll pause it and I'll go do something else. And so yeah. I come back and I'm like, you know, people probably thought I was playing this thing for like six hours and I really wasn't. I was playing it for like 20 minutes and then yeah. went to go to a movie and then it, it went out to dinner and then came back and was like, oh. Oops. True. Well, I... I soon I'm sure I will I will jump to another game. I'm just you're trying in it. To, you're in it to win I'm, it. I've, it's like a late like bug I said, bite. better late than never. I, yeah. I I I was behind and I've been I was just so busy and I'm starting to get busy again to where I've not been able to play that much. But mm. it's been it's been the one game that I've definitely tried to put the most amount yeah. of time into. Yeah. Um, so yeah. I've, been, I've been playing some stuff. Um, I briefly got in. I've been watching this show called The Orville. I don't know if you've heard of it. Seth um, MacFarlane? It's a Seth MacFarlane show on Fox in which he... It's like a mixture of, of Star Trek and a little bit of his brand of comedy. Mm-hmm. Um, My but brand. it's more of... Uh, My brand. Um, it's more of a Star Trek show than it is a comedy. I think it's it's more in line with what you would expect from it. I think it's, yeah. a, it's a very... like optimistic show which mm-hmm. star trek like historically is a very optimistic show and i feel yeah. like that that brand continues out but it's 
a little bit more modern and has a little bit more modern take on on obviously the sci-fi stuff of it but right the subject matters because star trek is always about like you know finding like looking at cultural socioeconomic issues and then representing them in storylines or like you know family issues and trying to figure out how to represent them in different episodes and right. stuff so i've been watching that and i've been thinking you know i kind of want to play a space game and i don't really mm-hmm. want to play no man's sky and yep. I thought about putting on the Mass Effect Andromeda, which is, isn't that great, because mm-hmm. Mass Effect 2 for life. Yeah. Um, and I was like, well, maybe I can try this, like, Star Trek online business. Mm-hmm. This is free. Uh, There's no skin off my back, and you just download it and play right. it for free. And I start it, and it's not half bad. I actually really? am kind of enjoying it. Yeah. For uh, And I'm, like, maybe, like, three or four hours into it. Yeah. Um, it's. I mean, it's kind of... It's not, like, a full... It's not like a something that I would recommend to people who aren't like right. pretty big fans. Like I'm a pretty big fan of Star you have Trek. To, yeah, so not um, for everyone necessarily. Right. It's like if you like Star Trek, you would like this game. But um, outside of that, I've been um, back, and I'm considering doing a whole episode of the podcast about this. Yeah. So, well, I didn't actually tell you this. I recently did, I the other day did download a, one of the free games on the PlayStation. What'd you play? Um, well, here's the thing. It's a long, long, long story short. I downloaded it. It's called Steep. It was, uh, yeah, uh-huh. U- is it Ubisoft? Ubisoft? Yeah. I think it's, it's Ubisoft. U- Ubisoft that it, right? did it. It's like an open world. Open world. Uh, snowboarding skiing. Yeah. Because X-game there's no kind of skateboarding games. And I said, well, what's, what's the next yeah. closest? And it's free. Mm-hmm. The servers have not allowed me to log in. Really? Every time I try and I enter my information, it just says that it cannot connect. I got it on sale once at release. And it's been, uh, like, I enjoyed it. For what it good. was worth, I liked it, and it had like it was more in the line of skate, mm-hmm. like where you you got to choose where to hold your board and like where you spun your board, and so like you either like held your board, like you got to choose which hand you hold your board with and how you spin. So you can do any kind of trick. I'm, but I'm hoping I can get it to work. I might just have to delete it and re-download the game, yeah. possibly. But it was free, so I was like, eh, yeah. yeah. And it looks good. I mean, I mean, it's. It looks pretty sweet. The I just haven't been able to fun. play it yet. The skydiving and base mm-hmm. jumping is really fun because that it's like you have a course and it's like how low you can get yourself to the ground without crashing. Without dying. And so you get more points for doing crazier stuff yeah. and for falling lines and different yeah. stuff. It's an interesting game. Um, it's it's uh, I just want SSX back. Yeah. Know? There were so many games on the PlayStation 1. That I used to play, just snowboarding games. And Did you go to the Belk in the mall uh, uh, back in back in yonder days of Bluefield where they had that Nintendo 64 in there? Do you remember that? Dude, what? Yeah. That you, just brought had, back. I have not thought about that. Yeah, and they had the Game Boy beside it, and they got Dude. the Nintendo 64. And you could play, uh, you could only play, I think it was just SSX. On that, you could you could <laughs> how, only play. How SSX. have I forgotten about this? Yeah, it was the Nintendo sixty four in the Belk in the children's section. They had like back when they like put like televisions in oh in the stuff. Um, but that's where I got kind of exposed to <sighs> snowboarding video games was through SSX, and I thought it was like the most fantastic <laughs> thing because like I didn't have a Nintendo sixty four, and I thought it was like right. I was still like rocking my Sega Genesis. Do you remember? Just a side note. <laughs> This bring back memories. What is this? That's remember that in the mall. Yeah, yeah, it was like a bridge. Our in the listeners mall. Yeah, don't yeah, know yeah. what's going on, but yeah, that was yeah, just yeah. a side note. Golly, yeah, the SSX, any of those games. I remember my dad. I can't remember what the game was called. It wasn't SSX. It was another yeah. snowboarding game, though. Yeah. Um, it. I cannot think of the name of it though. But I played that game for hours on end when I was like seven or eight yeah maybe maybe younger i always and love it when my parents go to the mall because i'll be like i'll be here yep at this station I will be right here so i would play a bunch my, of a bunch of that and then super mario the head my mom worked at the mall when i was a kid because yeah. she worked at pearl vision mm-hmm. and i worked on glasses so sometimes she worked I, at pearl jam pearl jam yeah so i used to walk down i remember walking down there and, yeah, and yeah. when i was really bored but yeah man but yeah, so steep. I need to give it. I need to try to get it to give work. Give it another shake. Because I know the. Ser- I, well, my first thought was, well, maybe yeah. the servers are just like, they've. Because I'd never heard of this game before, so yeah. I was like, well, maybe it was a mistake. The servers actually aren't even up anymore, mm-hmm. and it's just 
PlayStation hasn't taken that off. But then I looked into it. I was like, no, people are still playing this game pretty widely. Mm, it's like a could decent, be something. I don't know. Yeah. So I don't know what the deal is. It's worth playing. I liked it. Yeah. So I'm interested to play it because mm. it's winter and I can't get Skate or Tony Hawk right now. So I well, I could, I guess, get. I mean, go buy a PlayStation Two. Yeah. And- but you know who's gonna do that? So. Yeah, that's that's a whole. I'm, that's I'm a in whole a process. I'm in a battle with Microsoft right now. Yeah, what's your battle with? Microsoft? Because I have my Xbox. Mm-hmm. I cannot access my account because it says that it thinks someone else is trying to access my account, and I need to verify my account information. Mm-hmm. Well, the account email I signed up with I don't have anymore. It's completely shut down. Right. It's from like middle school. Right. The phone number on the account is my old phone number mm-hmm. that I also. There's, I can't. So I filled out these forms. I called all this stuff because they're still charging me for Xbox Live. On this account? Yeah. Mm. They won't cancel it until I verify the account. They keep wanting to send me to just like instant message an agent who does not help me at all. Tells me to fill out a form. I fill out the form. The form gets denied. Mm. So I'm just stuck paying. So I'm actually about to just like file a fraud charge against them, I think, and just get the, the no, charge we, taken we off. We haven't used the full power of the podcast. Maybe we can use yeah. the full power of the podcast. If anyone out. out there works for Microsoft... If you are listening and work for Microsoft, Austin help. is the real Slim Shady, and he will stand up. Please help me, or if you know how to do this, because I've filled out form after form that they've sent me, and it does right. not work. If you know... How to help me get my account verified? Yes, or get someone. If you're a that listener can, and just know and know the right channels and, and and know how to do it, like please help me, help him out, help the poor kid out, help me, help you. Yes, or more, just help me yes. in this situation. That's you'll get a shout out. You'll get a shout. Out. We'll, I will be forever in your. We'll debt. give you a shout out. You'll you'll get a you'll get a free. You'll just get a free. You'll get a free Vault Boys podcast and stakeout. Podcast. Podcast. Koozie. Actually, those don't exist. So I would say won't. they get a free episode of, you know, because, you know, everybody pays for the episodes, if right? If you somehow help me Wait, with this. What do you... So nobody... Oh, uh, nobody pays for these? <laughs> well, why are we doing them then? No. <laughs> if you... If you do this, I will record an entire episode that I will send personally to you. About anything you want me to talk about. Okay. For 20 minutes. For 20 minutes, you will receive an Austin rant if you can solve his <laughs> Xbox conundrum. Yes. How about Serious th- inquiries only. You know, the only time I've ever had my identity stolen was through Xbox Live. And it happened while I, was at, I worked the, at the bank, which as mm-hmm. you're familiar because you're part of the bank working people, yes. is you often check your account every day because you work at the bank. And yeah. it's like, hmm, I didn't make that withdrawal. But Xbox did, and I didn't buy anything on Xbox because I haven't turned on my Xbox yes. in two years. And then I'd look so, at it, and I would go, eesh. I think somebody got a hold of that. Yeah, luckily I have text alerts set up that'll tell me anytime anything over a penny was spent on my account. Yeah. So I've got two step on a. Uh, it got me two step. Oh, it got me two step. Uh, I got that set up on PlayStation PSN because I, you know, I don't have an Xbox. I'm right. I just I have a Switch, I have a PlayStation, and I've got a Mac. So <laughs> people are like PC gaming. I'm like Mac gaming. Oh yeah, yeah. Very well known for its gaming for for the gaming platform. Yeah. But true gamer over here. We've gotten really off the rails. So so sorry about that rant, everybody. Well, it's fine. I have been playing Kingdom Hearts three though. Um, it has been a throwback from uh, my middle school days of playing Kingdom Hearts two. Um, that was a. Uh, it's like a. I used. To, I could go into detail about how much I enjoy it, but I know that maybe, like, 2% of the audience probably cares about this, like, stupid little game. Uh, so I'll, I'll spare them and then uh, <laughs> wait till the episode that it comes out that's titled for it so that you can um, uh, know to, to ignore or listen to that one if you're interested um, in that situation. With that said, we will move into our next segment. Okay. I have only one very important question. You got a smoke? Got gum. Used to be a cop myself. Only for a day, though. I thought I was bad. (laughs) 
So Austin, this week we're both out of town. We're both we're actually doing not stuff. here. Right we're now. not here right now. I mean, we're he- we're somewhere, but yes. we're not here when this goes live yes. or the normal time that we would record. We're having this. an so, out of body experience. right Yes, now. we're having an out of body experience right now. But this week, I wanted to talk to you a little bit about one of my all time favorite series in video games. Yes, Resident. Evil. That was good. Was that all right? That was it, was, it was. Maybe I could do it. I, I don't. Eight point three out of ten. Okay. Was good. I don't want to. I don't want to try it again because I'm afraid that that might bring my score average down. No. Yeah. Eight point three out of ten. That's score. pretty good. Yeah. Anything over a seven. That would qualify yeah. me for the Olympics yeah. of yeah, um, pronouncing the title. Yeah. Um, so, horror games. Do you often play horror games? Um, I'll be honest with you. Mm-hmm. No. No, <laughs> you don't. You don't. But you have mentioned to me that you have played. So here's the thing: a Resident Evil. I and you probably know this about me, and my other friends know this about me. Mm-hmm. I'm not big on horror movies in terms of jump scares. Right. I love psychological and thrillers. Last week, last week, you explained to me that you want to go spend a, a, a bunch of nights at this like haunted mansion place yes. like you're freaking eddie murphy last you week wanna... i did mention that yes <laughs> but as as we record this as we immediately record this after immediately we following that, that episode the, the magic so of production 25 minutes ago i yes. mentioned to you <laughs> that i would like to do that but that's another thing i love creepy stuff i love scary stuff i just don't like jump scares mm-hmm. staying in a haunted place it's just overall creepy like mm-hmm. it's just it's it's scary but what if something jumped out and scared you like this, the fear. I mean, you could technically call it, that a jump scare. I mean, I, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> but is but it like is it like the anticipation of knowing that there's it's a the jump loud scare? like because that, that it's could like be the, the case. it's like the music like there's like a fiddle or like a violin and it's like and it's like yeah just just like shrieking sound and it's like getting higher and higher and higher mm-hmm. and you know something's coming and you start to, like if it's a real situation it's just like oh. There was a that was a ghost. Um, yeah, my, there's the real fear. But I just hate sitting there like gripping my chair on edge, knowing something's coming. But I love psychological thrillers. I love stuff yeah. that's just creepy in general. So like you're more like a, a Shutter Island. That wasn't really yeah. even scary to me though. It was. Well, it was a thriller. I mean, it was yeah. a thriller movie. What about? Did you watch A Quiet Place? I haven't yet. No. Mm, see, that's got some jump scares um, in it. So I was curious if you. Uh, like, last, you watched Mothman Bird? prophecies was that's it, it's not necessarily scary, but it's a very psychologically yeah, creepy movie. Yeah. Um, you watched Bird Box though, right? Bird Box sucked. <laughs> God, I'm sorry. It just it, there's so, poor old Sandy Bullock. I listen. I love Sandra Bullock. Yeah. I love Sandra. Yeah. I she was the only thing about that movie I liked because mm-hmm. I love her. Mm-hmm. I love her so much. Mm-hmm. But just the, I think that the writing was really lazy, and John, I don't even, okay, John Malcolm, his character, it was just like the, I was really spoiler alert, happy to see him die. Um, oh, you just, oh my god! I gosh. said spoiler alert, dude. That's you rules are rules. Alert. I said spoiler yeah. alert. I can't yes. be held accountable for that now. Gosh. Um, but well, I just, was, there I was, was just a lot of potential. Spoiler in alert, I was surprised when Boba Fett flew in at the end. Yeah, that was really like, uh, that's another so reason I'm like, guys, ah, stay true to yourself. Like, yeah, you had this whole thing going and then that happens and it's just like, and then like, weirdly enough, like Steve Zahn's character from Strange Wilderness was like in it too. And, yeah. And I was like, what type of crossover is this? It was just really strange. But anywho, that movie was not that scary to me. But getting back to it. I I have played several Resident Evil games, though. Yes. They're really the only horror game I've horror played. Horror game. Um, which Resident Evil 5 really was not scary to me at all, though. No. It was Resident not. Evil 5 was more like, I've got a buddy over at my house. And this was back in the golden generation of when you could sit down with a buddy and play a game on a couch. Yeah. Like I a, a full-budget game. Yes. I played... My buddy Ryan Cardwell, whom you know, I I believe. I mean, I know, but I don't know if these people know. You guys, yeah, you guys remember Ryan. You guys, um, my buddy Ryan. Yeah, he and I played through Resident Evil 5 in like a day yeah. online. Like we were both online. Mm. Um, however, Resident Evil 4, that game scared the hell out of me. 
I mean, there were days I just didn't want to play it because I was yes. like, I'm not, I'm not emotionally, I'm, I'm not, not here. I'm not emotionally, I'm not emotionally here for this today. For and this. then other days, you know, I was super pumped to play it, but there were some days I was like, yeah, I can't do this today. I'm going to play something happy. Like, mm. but it was so good. I, that was, that was on the GameCube, right? Yeah, it was on the GameCube. And I played that when, I guess I, first time I played it, I was in the fifth grade and this, you know, ages myself appropriately. Mm-hmm. Um, I was in the fifth grade, and in that game, spoiler alert, eventually there comes a part where you start shooting the zombies in the head, when normally in the, in previous versions of this game, they would just die. Yeah. This one, tentacles yeah. spurred out of where mm-hmm. their head was, and the zombie continues to attack you with its yeah. zombie body and the tentacles. Which, that's not in any other Resident Evil game, is it? Mm, I don't think. They, they try to... to do some different stuff with it, I think, in six and six it's there's some different like changes to how they do it, but yeah. nothing specifically like that because mm-hmm. it's it was very frustrating wise it's a it's a different virus the game got got progressively harder as you went on, yeah, like, it had in an interesting an intense diff- way, yeah, difficulty system where if you were doing well, it yeah. would get harder, but if you kept on dying, it would get easier for yeah. you, yeah, um, it definitely, which I still have so many grievances. With, so you're sending one person to get the president's daughter. I the plot of that game is one of my favorite video game stories of all time, just because of the absurdity of it. Yes, it is so out there. My name is Agent Leon Kennedy, and I'm gonna go save <laughs> the president's he, daughter. He has the like very dramatic it's like, like time staring crisis out. at the mall. It, it's like, like he's got this very dramatic like staring out the window of the car in the like first scene as oh, they're driving yeah. in. He's like uh, the, the like oh, penultimate emo boy. Yeah, he's got the hair like swoop down yeah. over his eye he's and then like, uh, here's the thing that first scene he goes in the house and then s- stuff starts popping off and he kills everybody and goes down to the village oh yeah and stuff starts popping off and then the guy with the chainsaw comes out yo i'm out i don't care if it's the president's daughter i don't care if i don't care whose daughter it is i don't care if it's my daughter i'm going back <laughs> okay. and listen i'm getting help Yep. I'm not taking on an army of these weird mutated people with a nine millimeter pistol. Yes. And 2004 emo hair swooped over my eyes. Yes. And like, dude, like you said, the absurdity of the storyline is just like, dude, well, like you get pick to your a, battles. You get to a point. Okay. So I'm, it's like you have the giant, like, uh, lake shark. God, that you got the freaking harpoon. Let your yeah, lake. you got to harpoon the the zombie lake shark, and then you got you got to go and fight this general guy who gets half of his body cut off, and then he turns into like this like zombie Spider Man, and then he sets this barn on fire, and then you're like trying to escape the barn while this guy keeps on crawling up all the rafters yep. and attacking you. It's like, and then you got to go to the castle with the midget. Uh, I remember him, yeah. And it's like he is then attacking you with, I think, a <laughs> rocket launcher. At also, one point. at the same point, as you're going through and the game, it's getting harder. You also, at that point, have to manage the president's daughter and tell yeah, her when to stay. There's a point where the t- president's daughter, you find her, and it's like, maybe we shouldn't have found her because yeah. now we got to take care of her. Now it's like, God, we now we got to make sure she's okay. And it's like she gets caught, and there's like a point where she gets caught in a trap. And it's like, oh, you got to find the key to that trap. It's like, oh, thank God she's safe there. I don't have yeah. to worry about her. She can, like, just, okay, she's there. she can just chill out there. And it's the 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 lake scene. That was a what? Why did you, I cannot remember because it's been so long. Why yeah. do you have to go out on the lake? Well, you're like looking for you're looking for evidence. I mean, you're you're just looking for like what's going on in the village. So and overall, it's more like a why not? Why are you not? You're why why would you be on the lake? Just trying to explore and figure it out. And I don't think you get like your your real mission until you meet up with um, you, the little Spaniard guy. The, yeah. Because you know, it's all technically set in Spain, that game, yeah. which I often forget. The little traveling merchant guy was always... What are you buying? Yeah, like the what voice. What are you selling? Yeah, it's just so... <laughs> it's like, I, that's one of the most iconic like characters from a video game, just from a, <laughs> a like, utility just, perspective. Every time I'd see him, I'm like, 
bro, help me get out of here. Like, how what are you, you buying? How are you a decent human being and you're just fine and they're trying to kill me? Like, help me, man. Like, get mm-hmm. me out of here. Like, your little magic that you're somehow teleporting around. Like, just get me out. And he's got that cloak, and then he opens it up. Like, he's like a watch salesman. Like, like yeah. a CD New York watch salesman. He's like, <laughs> <"Look> at, <laughs> I've got some new wares for you. Uh, dude, it was just... That, that game, it was amazing, but so baffling at the same time. Yeah, and it's really... I mean, it's the inflection point of the series. Um, and went on to inspire games like Dead Space... Um, like Mass Effect, Uncharted, like any third person, like Years of War. <laughs> what do you What do you have? Uh, I'll buy it at high price. <laughs> oh my gosh, <laughs> that voice! <laughs> just, I just had to hear it. I'm sorry. That's fine. I wanted everyone else to just go back down memory lane with us. But that game went on to inspire like how third person action works and how. Yeah. Like video games, like even like modern, sh- like yeah. as you go through like Gears of War, Spec Ops: The Line, like you go mm-hmm. through any third person shooter, and that game is what taught other games yeah. to to be it, because uh, or else you just had like a character in the center, and then it was like free flowing from there. Yeah. Um, well, to be completely honest, that was the Resident Evil Four was the first Resident Evil game that I actually took the time to play Mm -hmm. i tried resident evil 2 when i was a kid Mm -hmm. and i hated the camera i couldn't do it i just it's an old i don't i don't care for it as much i just couldn't it was like okay there's just this fixed right camera angle Mm -hmm. in every room you go in and i could i just couldn't do it yeah. Now I probably could, but when I was a kid, it was so frustrating. It I just, is, it's frustrating. I could not and was part aiming of the, and and to, to to get into it as Resident Evil One, which was the original one, was not. It was more like a. It wasn't necessarily like a zombie outbreak. It was more like a haunted house. Like yeah. it had that like haunted house aspect. Like mm-hmm. you would go to a haunted house here. Yeah. Um, the thing that. I think was most interesting about that. And it started with point and click games like like, uh, oh, what's the, the pirate game? Monkey Mountain, Space mm-hmm. Mountain, Monkey Cruise. I don't know what the name of it is, but it was like old Grim Fandango yeah. and, and Day of the Tentacle and that kind of stuff. Like those were all puzzle games. But this had a horror element mixed in with these puzzles that you had to yeah. do to unlock certain doors. Have you ever done an escape room? Uh, I have not. Coincidentally enough, some of my coworkers and I were talking about trying to do one soon, and I am apparently the only person in America that still has not done one. <laughs> they are they are so much fun. First of all, I think that Resident Evil One went to inspire this like new phenomenon that mm-hmm. is escape rooms. I don't yeah. think that escape rooms would have existed without Resident Evil One because Resident Evil One is an escape room simulator. Yeah. You have to just use critical thinking. You have to use critical thinking. You have to think about these objects. You have to solve these puzzles. You're going to get a bunch of, you have this whole house to explore. Yeah. Or, you know, floors or whatever, you know, underground secret facility. Right. Umbrella. We're going to come with Albert Wesker and make a bunch of films with Mila Golovich or whatever her Mm -hmm. name is and shoot up some people. Um, you have this whole house to explore and you've got to mm-hmm. figure out like what, like what puzzles you, you know, what does this like red orb do? Where yeah. does it fit? Oh, if I go outside, I know that I can like kill a zombie dog and get a bell from his collar so that it fits into this other thing. Like it's a little more obtuse puzzle solving. Mm-hmm. I feel like the, I, I legitimately feel like that there wouldn't be escape rooms without them. So right, when I think you that's go, a great point. When you go into escape rooms, I've done one and I, I did one with my wife, Selena and her mother and brother. We did it just for fun and it was a, like a, like a heist. Mm-hmm. And so you would go in there and it was like, okay, you need to steal the diamond from this case and there's right. a laser grid and a glass case <laughs> and you're not allowed to break anything like that's there's like some stipulations with this as you're not allowed to break anything or tear right. anything up um and or like move certain things like they're labeled as to the, every, every escape yeah. room has different rules and so it was like reading the brochure and then it was like okay every like other letter has some weird like font with it and some words are capitalized mm-hmm. and some are not and oh, this painting was made in this year, and 
th- this year makes like with this day makes a combination, and that might fit this lock over here. Yeah. And like you're like slowly piecing together different things. And once you unlock like a door to something, then it's like okay, this changes things. And it's a mm-hmm. lot like Resident Evil, where you get to a point where you like put in the certain keys and then it opens a new passageway which opens up a bunch of different stuff mm-hmm. and you get like for example they have like colored or like shape based keys so in Resident Evil 1 that's like there's like an armor key and a shield key and a sword key and once you get these keys it starts opening up more rooms for you to go in mm-hmm. um so I just thought it was, it was it's worth pointing out that while zombies are not original to Resident Evil, I think the escape rooms they really perfected mm-hmm. how those could work and then these people got older and figured out wait a second, we can just do this in real life. Like we can simulate like this can be like a group activity. Yeah. I mean, real they've life. really caught on. Yes. I remember in the earlier years of them it was such a cool idea and I think it's really grown. So it's good that it it I was under the impression, I really thought that it was just going to be a trend that died out within a year, Mm -hmm. but it seems like they're still really popular, and I think people do get it, because you get that kind of sense of camaraderie, you have to work together, and it is sort of just like a real life video mm-hmm. game you're trying to and now if i mean and it's it's more like if you go back and play which they have the hd edition for Resident evil one and they got rid of the tank controls uh and it's just like regular controls now um mm-hmm. but it's you still have the weird camera angles that uh, i think are trying to simulate horror it's not exactly a particular i mean it, it's not a scary game just yeah. because of, of the age of it but um when they came out with resident evil 7 mm-hmm which is all in first person, and then you can play the entirety of the game in VR. Yeah. It is one of... It is the scariest game I have. It's I've heard one that. of the scariest experiences I have ever had, just because of how it's... Like, you still... They brought back, like, five and six. Mm-hmm. Just got rid of the puzzle solving. I mean, it literally got... It just became an action game where you were going through... I think five, it was like you were mostly in Africa doing stuff, mm-hmm. and you were just shooting enemies, and you were with a partner, and you were shooting stuff. It was just more of a, of a shooter. It yeah, wasn't, it was more of yeah. like an action game. And, and seven brought back... And six was, six was the same way. But seven brought it back to its roots and, like, made it... It put it in first person, which it had never done. And then... It's just right in your face. It is I mean. set in this, like, Louisiana plantation, and there are these creatures within the game, but there's this family called the Baker family and they have all gotten like mutated by mm-hmm. this virus that's outbroken. So they all have like different weird little powers. You Like I said, I hate jump scares. I don't think I'll ever play that game. I want to sit down and I want to play the first part with you um, just because like, there is a portion where they, they in the beginning of the game, I'm not trying to spoil, I'm not spoiling that much. Um, in the beginning of the game, you're sitting down at the table and, and they're all eating a bunch of flesh and they've tied you down and they're like, uh, they hear a commotion outside and they're like, oh, we'll be back. We'll be back for you. And so it's like, you got to <laughs> rock your chair back and forth to escape. And then yeah. it's like, okay, you don't have any weapons. You don't have nothing. And if you stay in the round of that room too long, the dad's going to get back in there with an ax and he's going to be like, Hey, what are you doing? Yeah. And he's going to come at you. And then you have to escape into this gutter and you escape down into it. And you're like, okay. And then you eventually come back to that same house and you're like, okay, you're, you're being real cautious. Cause at this point you've learned, you know, that like there's, there's bots. How would you go so back to the house? You got to You got to escape. You got to You got to That's the only way out. And so you're walking down this hallway and there's no doors in the hallway. You're just walking. You keep on going, and you're, you're making sure to like be real slow. And you're scaring learn. me by you talking low. Of, I feel like something's you can, coming. You can kind of like hear. My anxiety's through the roof right now. This is why of, I can't play this game. You can kind of hear what's happening. Oh god! And then, as you're walking down the hallway, the wall beside you completely caves in, and there is the dad with his axe, and he says, "Hey there, boy!" And he picks you up by your neck. And throws you down the hallway. I think that if we ever do a live stream, we're, we having a do, live stream of me, like just <laughs> there are there are other. Uh, he is one of the, the scariest characters in the game, and it's like 
I, I don't want to spoil too much of the jump scares because I feel like that they are some some of the best and most well deserved ones. They're not cheap right. in any way. Um, with him, well, it, that really, and I mean, it brought the horror element back to the series, yeah. and still had the puzzles. Like you still had to figure out. There was a shotgun that was being held to the statue. When you picked up the shotgun, it closed the door behind you. So you knew that you saw this sh- model shotgun in the case, and you would go and get the model shotgun, put it where the shotgun is. Mm-hmm. Or you would see that there was this big wood carving, and you're like, wait, when I hold this up to a light, it, it makes a few different kind of shadows. And so you would figure out a combination of these different things. Getting medallions for doors, like it had that same Resident Evil 1 gameplay with a more modern take mm-hmm. on the horror. Now with Resident Evil 2 Remake, which mm-hmm. I've been playing. It's one of the, probably yeah. the game I've played the most I've of. I've seen you on that um, quite a bit this week. There, it's, it's the same as Resident Evil 2, except they've remixed a lot of the like mechanics of it, the levels. It's the same storyline with the same characters. Um, but the combat feels a lot more like an updated version of Resident Evil 4, mm-hmm. but still with the same puzzles. Yeah of Resident Evil, Resident Evil 2, which were very similar to Resident Evil 1. Um, Right. Well, (laughs) Resident Evil 2, I feel like I could probably play this one. I think you can. The only thing is... Yeah, I already know what you're about to say. Well, the zombies. First of all, the zombies, they did did full motion capture for them, and every zombie is a threat. And it's the only game I've played where, like, like, zombies... You know, Left for Dead, you've got all this stuff. Like, in Resident Evil, you can just kill a zombie. And then, like, there's a a point where they come back as as the Scarlet Zombies. Like, there's different levels to it. In this one, every single zombie is a threat. Yeah. And it is very important. And it's like a zombie land thing where it's, like, double tap. Yeah. You want to make sure they They are... are going to act like they're dead. Yeah. And I have had zombies that I have killed, and I have come back two hours later uh-huh. and have walked over, and they grab me by the leg. And yeah. I'm like, are you kidding me? <laughs> I was watching on uh, – someone posted on Twitter yesterday. They were like, I'm 10 minutes into this game, and it's already terrifying me. Mm-hmm. And it was this guy, and he's commentating the whole thing. And uh, he's trying to get out of like the storeroom, mm-hmm. and he runs out of ammo, and <laughs> they're just like surrounding him. And the whole here's the thing that flashlight aspect. Oh yeah, and the that, way it plays with the shadows and like you think you see something, and there are times when literally they make up a sh- like the game makes up a shadow. Yeah, no, I believe it. I saw that and and it it terrified me. Like even just watching that two minute clip, I was mm-hmm. like, man, this is creepy because. You know, you, you you turn real quick, and there it's right in your face. Mm-hmm. And it seemed like, and from what I can tell, what I've read, that like you definitely, I don't. It it doesn't seem like ammo is easy to come by. It's 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 not it's not uncommon. Like it feels like it's the it rides a really nice line. Yeah. Like it is it is just just enough to get what you need to get yeah. done done you're not gonna not have enough like 3, to get everything yeah. you're not gonna have like three thousand bullets at right point, yeah. you are are going to be using every last bit of that yeah. and it also has the same difficulty setting if you play on standard where if you continually die it, the game will get a little bit easier you can go to assisted which is the easy mode but generally if you die a few times the game is just gonna naturally yeah. make it easier and then as you like if it's a hard, just that hard part, don't switch the mode. Then just go ahead and, and, and keep on with it. And eventually it'll get easier and it'll bump you back up to what you're normally used to. Yeah. Well. But not only are the zombies creepy, there's a point, and I won't spoil what point that is, <laughs> when you are walking down a hallway and there's debris in your way and you're just like, like at this point you are... Not necessarily well equipped, but you're well used to everything in the game. Mm-hmm. And then all of a sudden, the debris is thrown out of the way, and there is a gigantic man in a black trench coat and a black fedora standing there. And you were shooting your guns at him, and he is not he's not stopping. This character, which has a lot of different names, I refer to him as Mr. X, which mm-hmm. is the colloquial yes. American name for him, is like the best Michael Myers character friday the 13th character i've ever seen portrayed in a video game just because of the variability of him that he is a constant threat so even in resident evil 7 like 
there is like sections of the game where you're trying to run from different characters, but it doesn't cover the vastness of the entire play area. You could run out like you have to run away from this character, but he could show back up at any time if you're making a lot of noise, if you're doing something like you don't know where he could be. Mm-hmm. You got to be on your toes 100 percent of the time and he can just show up out of nowhere and knock you senseless. Yeah. I I have seen on Twitter again people tweeting about that. Yes. And every one of them was like, This is the most terrifying thing I've experienced in a video game in a long time. My favorite my favorite meme that I've seen has been um it was on the I think the PlayStation 4 Reddit. Um and it was like Mr. X in this game has um one of the best audio cues and it's Leon, he's walking through a hallway and all of a sudden he opens he opens a door. He's like near a door, and you hear this bop bop, and you're like, "What is this?" And then he opens the door, and it's like, "X gonna give it to you. He gonna give it to you." And it's like the dude. He's like punching Leon, and it's like it's in cue with the music. So like, put it bow, pow, and he's like punching him. Oh, I love it. It's so funny. You need to look that up. Oh my um, gosh, but. <laughs> uh, he, he's a fantastic part of the game. I think that it's it's interesting to see because it's it's a little bit lighter in the horror elements. Um, and I feel like that there's now there's two modern styles of Resident Evil, almost like an updated version of the old style, mm-hmm. and this more like modern horror first person style that that's in effect. And they're similar to each other, but they're different enough so that they could continue on with that series in two yeah. different ways that draws respect to a lot of the different stuff. Hmm. So, Austin, I wanted to thank you for joining me today. And I want to thank our listeners for listening to the show today. This has been a, a little bit of a shorty one since we're out of town. But you can follow the podcast on social media at Vault Boy Spot. That's where we post everything. That's where we're it's part of our brand. We're, we're the Vault Boys. We're, we're boying it up, being boy life. It's Vault Boy and Vault Boy, by the way. We're still we're still. Oh, that's trying right. to there work was a split. Toward- toward uh, civility here <laughs> and uh, and reconciling our differences. So right now, currently, it is Vault Boy and Vault Boy. Vault Boy and Vault Boy. But you can follow me, Dave, at Chaffins on Twitter. That's C-H-A-F-F-I-N-Z-Z-Z. Triple Z, like I'm um, sleeping at the wheel. Or you can follow me at O'Connor underscore 93. O-C-O-N-N-O-R underscore 93. And don't forget to check out our other mainline podcast, Fall Boys WV, as we cover the real lore and history of Fallout 76 every other week. And join us next time as we delve deeper into the games that you love from across the digital spectrum. To Microsoft for everything they own. I think you should. Bill Gates. Bill Gates. Fuck Bill Gates. He could just give me like two million and I'd be happy. And he would literally make it back in like 10 minutes. That's probably true. (laughs)